Good morning, guys. Sorry I couldn't be in class today, um, but hopefully this video will help kind of go over what we would have done if I was there with you. All right, for this video, you're kind of going to take some notes and do some practice on the electron configuration and orb orbital diagram notes. Um, and we're gonna start with orbital diagrams. So hopefully you were given a few minutes to look at these orbital diagrams for boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, um, and had, some, had a chance to write down some observations together. Again, you have never seen these before, so I don't expect you to know what, what these are explaining, but you can actually probably figure out if you just give yourself a few minutes to look and observe, you might be able to figure some things out. So what I've noticed, I'm going to zoom in, is we have low energy down here, and we have high energy up here. And the energy looks like it seems to be increasing. And then we have these little labels, right? 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. And some of them have lines um, kind of on the bottom. Some of them have multiples, like three. Some have one. Um, and there's little arrows on these lines. So first thing that I'm noticing is that we're, we're kind of going from low to high. So we're filling. Hold on one sec. There we go. So we fill the energy levels from low to high. As you can see, all of them boron, carbon, nitrogen. The 1s is filled, which is representing the low energy down here. Then we keep filling as we go, right, up higher. We're not filling from the top down. So not filling from the top down. Um, it looks like we're adding these little arrows kind of one at a time. The main difference that I see from boron to carbon is that, and then to nitrogen, is that we just keep putting in these arrows, and I'll zoom out so we can, oops, that's going to make me dizzy. As we keep adding arrows one at a time. So what, what could those arrows possibly represent? Well, I know when I go from boron to carbon to nitrogen, we're, we're changing protons, right? Every time, so boron has, for example, five protons, six protons. Sorry, guys, if this is making you dizzy, yikes. Seven protons and eight protons. And if you look, I have five arrows, one, one two, three, four, five, six arrows, seven arrows, and eight arrows. Um, the one thing I will point out is, yes, those arrows could absolutely represent protons, but the whole part of this section is called electron configuration. And yes, these are orbital diagrams, but what is in orbitals? Electrons. Electrons are the ones that orbit, so to speak, according to Bohr, the, the nucleus. Um, so we're filling, we're adding arrows to represent electrons. Um, so it looks like when, when we see these lines, um, some of the arrows have like partners, right? One up, one down, some do not. So if we look, it appears like we fill the line and we start to fill like I'm seeing, I'm gonna look here. We've, we add an arrow, we add an arrow. We add an arrow, so now there's one on each line until you have one on each line. And it looks then like we start to pair, right? We didn't go up a level. It looks like there can be two arrows on each line, and we only pair when there's one already on every line. So I'll say fill empty line with one arrow. Start pairing when each line has one arrow. And then we already said that the arrows are, are our electrons, okay? I also noticed a few other things, right? Like when the electrons are paired up, they have one's pointing up, one's pointing down. I noticed that um, the there's numbers and letters. So like it looks like all of the S's, maybe I'll use blue for the S's, right? All of the S's have one line that can be filled, whereas the P's, 2p and 3p appear to have three lines and I noticed there's no one p so just some observations that might help us as we move forward 
All right, so here are those orbital energy diagrams a little bigger. Um, I will kind of bounce back and forth to this picture, but I do have a question. Let's see if how our observations work. Could we draw an orbital diagram for, let's do, sodium? So sodium has 11 protons, which means when it's neutral, it should have 11 electrons to cancel out. I'm going to use oxygen, right, because if we're doing sodium, as I saw before between like nitrogen and oxygen, everything's the same, and then we start to make a difference. So right now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons already, and so we know that we have to start pairing. We're going to fill up the 2p before we go up to the 3s. So that's 9, that's 10, and we need 11. So where do you think it goes? Well, it's going to go to the next energy level, point it up. So that's what sodium would look like for an orbital energy diagram. Guys, here, those are the ground states. So when you start filling from low to high, like I didn't randomly put an electron up here, right? That would not be the ground state. On the bottom of this electron configuration and orbital diagram notes, you have some vocab. The first one is ground state. So the ground state is the lowest potential energy arrangement for electrons. And really what we're doing, what we've been looking at, these ground state is just the lowest potential energy of electrons in an atom, and that's what we've been doing when we fill from low to high. All right, off-ball principles. So these are just the rules, off-ball, Huns, and Pauli exclusion. These are rules for drawing these orbital diagrams. So here's how it works. We start filling the lowest energy um, first, which is the 1s, and you have to fill that lower energy completely before you move on to the next. And we only increase energy level when all the orbitals and sublevels are full. So here's what I think of for to remember off-ball. If I'm going to go to a concert, whoops, try that again and my favorite band is playing here's the stage okay we start with 1s and there are two seats in that row then 2s or I should say there's like one row but it can hold two people right then 2s then 2p then 3s then 3p and so on and so forth. What that means, if I am an audience member and I walk in and this is my all time favorite band, I love watching them, I'm gonna go straight to the first row and me and whoever I'm going with is gonna sit in the front row. Well, when that row's full, the next people who arrive still love this band, they wanna sit as close as possible, they're gonna go in the next row. And then the next people come and they're gonna fill the next row, right? And so on and so forth. But the idea is you're gonna get as close to the stage as possible at lowest energy and then as we fill up we will move to the next row but the goal is to get as close to the stage as possible which is what people do when when their favorite band is playing all right i'm gonna get a little weird up in here but i think you can handle it um hun's rule says that electrons only pair up when all orbitals of that sublevel have one electron Okay, um, so here's here's a, a little bathroom situation. I'm not a dude, but I, I know enough, I think, from teaching this class and talking to some teenage boys about etiquette in the boys' bathroom. So ladies, I know you've never seen one of these before, but this is called a urinal. Okay, this is where the boys go pee. We have them at Legend High School if this is a foreign entity to you. Um, but gentlemen, I, you're going to laugh at me, but let's say, so I have I have... Uh, kind of we'll call this the 2p sub sub level right each urinal can hold one person or one electron and we got kind of them set there's my lines right set in in three kind of sub levels or three uh, su sub orbitals okay um, so gentlemen my question is if you walk into the bathroom and someone is using this urinal Where are you going to go? You, are you going to go right here? Hopefully, boys, you're screaming, absolutely not. That is like the wrong move. You never go pee next to another dude who's peeing. So I've talked to some boys, and I, I know you're going to get mad at me because you this is not totally true. Because guys tell me if you had to go, you would probably go all the way over to this one. Um, but we're going to fill kind of each orbital at a time. So at least let's give us some space and give us some space, okay? 
And notice all of these I started spinning up. You don't have to spin up to start. You could all spin down, okay? Um, so like maybe I'll do that for this one. Oh, that's not my eraser. Well, it should be. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't matter um, if you like your arrows to start up or down. As long as whatever you choose to start with, they're all the same. So now we have a problem. You're, you're a dude, you walk in and you see three guys peeing in these three urinals. Where are you going to go? And most guys laugh at me and say, absolutely not, Ms. Beller. I would just wait or I'd go into the stall or something. But now that there's one on each, we do have to pair up. So let's pretend you like have to go so bad it's not an option. All the stalls are taken. I don't know. Um, you're going to go here and we would have our opposite spin. Okay, um, so the way I remember Hun's rule, dudes, we don't go pee next to each other unless we absolutely have to and it's an emergency situation. Okay, we put one on each line and then we start to pair. All right, um, and then this last one is if, um, it's called poly exclusion, if two electrons have to be on the same orbital, so the same line, they have opposite spins. So back to our bathroom situation, if you have to go next to a guy, you don't wanna be this guy, right? How weird would it be, dudes, if you were peeing next to a guy and he was peeking out of the side, giving you the side eye like this. So if I have to pair, that electron's gonna have an opposite spin, that electron's gonna have an opposite spin. So it'll be opposite to whatever the arrow is on that line. All right, once you have those definitions down, you can flip to this page. We're moving from orbital diagrams now to electron configurations. And the electron configurations kind of look like a secret code. So you will be filling in what I'm talking about in this box right here, okay? This is what you are working on as I kind of flip through slides. All right, here is the electron configuration for boron. And it's kind of, to me, like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? You'll decide. Like I personally like to write these first and then that helps me draw these. But I have lots of students who like to draw these first and it helps them write these. Um, but we're gonna, I, the way I teach it is I always start with the orbital diagram first. So here's the orbital diagram for boron. And here's how I write the electron configuration. I start at low energy and I use the 1s and then two. Why is there a two? Well, we'll figure that out in a second. Okay, then I go up to the 2s and then two. Again, we'll figure out that exponent in a second. And then I go up to 2p and one. So if you're looking, I notice that two plus two plus one adds to five. And remember, boron has five electrons. So those little exponents must be representing the arrows or the electrons. So I have my 1s sublevel and on it are two electrons, one, two. I have my 2s sublevel next and on it are two electrons. And then I have my 2p sublevel and on it is one arrow, one electron. So that is the electron configuration for boron. Here is the electron configuration for carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, and I see one, two arrows, so 2p with the exponent 2. And that's how we read the electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 2. Um, you kind of just read it all together. All right, you try for nitrogen, so pause the video. All right, hopefully you get 1s2, 2s2, 2p3 for nitrogen. And then try oxygen for me. Perfect, I got 1s2, 2s2, 2p4 for oxygen. Is I'm not very good at remembering the order. Um, like, is it 1s, 2s, and well, now there's a p, and then an s again, and then a p. Like, I'm not very good at remembering the numbers and the letters for the correct order. Like, what do we start with, right, when I'm, if I had to draw this from scratch? Only two. Well, two here, two here, two here, so six. All right, so I told you that I actually like to write the electron configuration first and then do the orbital diagram. The reason, um, so I actually like to write the electron configuration first because it tells me the order, right? Low energy to high. And the way you can do this is using the periodic table. So if you look, here's boron and the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Well, if you notice, if I moved helium, I'm gonna steal him, if I moved helium over here, how wide is this section? One, two, right? Two elements wide. This whole section is called the S block and it's two wide. Well, how many electrons can we hold on an S orbital? I skipped that, I'm sorry. 
back here. Six wide, this is called the P block. How many electrons can we hold on a P orbital? Okay, this guy we will see is called D. We haven't gotten that far yet. And this guy is called F. D is 10 wide, so it can hold 10 electrons. F is 14 wide, it can hold 14 electrons. Okay, so here I see boron is in the first, it's basically like the first house on the street in this P neighborhood. So it's called 2P1. Well, what row am I in? I'm in the second row, and it's the first house. That's where we get our 2P1. The 1S2 and the 2S2 are talking about what led to it. So I actually read the periodic table like a book. 1S, and there's two houses. Then I run out of room, right? So we go to the next line. 2S, there's two houses. And then where are we stopping? 2P1. This whole section is one, two, three, four, five, six wide. This is called the P block. Oops. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you directions to another house in the neighborhood. So you need to drive down 1S and pass two houses. So we put a little two to signify how many houses we pass. So 1S, two. Then I run out of room. So now we go to 2S and we pass two houses. And then we get to the street that the house is on and this is called 2P, because it's in the P block, it's a different street name, and the house we're stopping at is one, two houses over. So that's the code for carbon. Every element has its own electron configuration, its own directions to get to the house. Same for nitrogen. Notice, this is a lot the same. If, I had to, if you had to give a friend directions from Denver to your house, and I had to give the same person directions from Denver to my house, the first part of our directions would be the same. Get on I-25 south towards Parker. Get off on Parker Road, well, for a lot of us, right? Um, so a lot of the directions are very, very similar because we live in a similar area, but then, luckily for me and for you, we don't live in the same house, so the last part of the code is gonna be different for every element because I'm saying like, oh, look, go three houses on the left, that's my house, right? That's gonna be different than the directions once you get into Parker for your house. So let's see, we go 1S, we pass two houses, 2S2, 2P12, stop at the third house, that's the three. Same idea for oxygen as well, so test this yourself. All right, I know on your notes you have like energy levels, sublevels, number of electrons, and then that box with sublevel S, P, D, and F. Um, I'm going to have you skip that for right now. We'll do that together in class. Um, you have this activity, though, so flip ahead um, to this page for me. Or I guess it might be at the end of your packet. Um, mine is in color. I have markers out for you guys if you want to pause the video and just kind of outline to match. But I tried to make the S block green. I tried to make the D block red. I tried to make the P block blue. And then I got like a pinkish color. I'll just use black for the F block down here. Okay, so what I have done is I have put the last part of the code. So we do write the entire code for elements, okay? But I just put the last part of the code in for each. So that way, if like, for example, if I were stopping here, I would give directions all the way like 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, because it can hold 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? And then you keep going all the way to this guy. So here's the idea. Let's fill in the ones that are missing, and I'll just pick a, color, a couple and have you do the rest. So if this is 1S1, this is 1S2. This guy is 1S1, or excuse me, 2S1, 2S2. 2P1, 2P2, this would be 2P3, all the way up to 2P6, okay? One thing's a little weird with the Ds, so I got 4S, right, 4S2, 3D. So I think of the letters as order of appearance. So if you watch a movie and, like, it, it opens up on this nice coffee shop and there's some rando serving coffee, in the credits, that, like, coffee, like, barista number one actually is the first person listed in the credits. S is the first letter that shows up in the movie, right? We start with 1S, and so it starts at 1 and then counts down from there. P is the next person we see in the movie. It starts at 2P and counts from there. So then we get 3P1, 4P1, 5P1, 6P1, 7P1. Um, D will be the next letter as I keep reading, right? If I read across, that shows up. So he starts at 3. So this is 3D, 4D, 5D, 
and 61. And then the last is once we get kind of down in here, after 6s, we drop down here, and the next letter we see is f, and it's going to start at 4f. So 4f1, and then we have 5f1, which is already labeled. Okay, so it's the number in front that it starts with is based off the order we see them. And then once, if you're seeing it for the second time, you're seeing it for the third time, we just keep counting up from where we started. Okay, so like let's see this guy here. Let's do this one. This was 4d6, so this must be 4d7, right? And then 5p1. So there's, again, I think you're able, hopefully, to fill these out. Um, so, and it, it's the last part of the code. So pause the video for me, fill these out, and then once you're done filling out all of them, you can move on to the last section of the video. Right here. So let's read through, and you can follow with me on that code that's written. I got 1S2, because I passed two houses. Now we go to the next line, 2S2 two houses. 2P, I got to keep passing, right, because I just keep reading across. 2P and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 houses on the street. Then we go here. This is called 3S, and there are two houses. We keep going all the way across. 3P, and there are six houses. Now we're on the row where the house is, but we got to pass this, right? 4S, and there are two. And last, now we actually go to where we stop and we write the last code, which was 3D1. So I'm writing the last code that's in that box. This is the electron configuration for Scandium. All right, so I would like for you to try writing these electron configurations. Um, the important thing to note is that you don't have to write every, like you don't have to write 1s1, 1s2, like you don't have to write every house you pass. If you're giving someone directions from legend to your school, you don't say, okay, pass the red house, then pass the white house, and then you say drive to this to Parker Road and turn right. So when you finish a section, a row, you just fill it completely, right? We're passing this many houses, put that number. So I did carbon for you, 1s2. So notice I didn't say 1s1, 1s2. I just say 1s2, 2s2, and then the last code, which you wrote down in the box, 2p2, the one you stop at. And there is some color coding to help you if you want to match it. Okay, um, sc, back to the periodic table. I would like you to ignore this one with the brackets. Okay, we will talk about that in class. Try for me these guys and ignore this one for right now too, okay? So you are trying, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different electron configurations. Some of them are a little long, but I think you can do it. Try these and work together. I know it's challenging, I know I'm not there, but please, please just give it a try and we will go through this um, and check our answers and I can answer any questions you have and we'll do lots of practice when I get back on Monday.